Hello, and welcome to All Ages Storytime. We'll start with our song. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. I'm glad to see you here. Every January, an award is given to an artist whose book for children is considered to have had the best illustrations for that year. And then honor awards are given to up to three other artists whose work is also exceptional. The award is called the Caldecott Medal, and it was named in honor of an English illustrator named Randolph Caldecott. The award is given by the American Library Association. And so each week during Read, Do, Explore, we're going to hear a story about the life from a Caldecott winner or honoree. This week, our story is about Kadir Nelson, who has painted the illustrations for many, many children's books. He's done them for magazines, for album covers, and even on postage stamps. Kadir grew up in Atlantic City, New Jersey, and in San Diego, California. Currently, he lives in Los Angeles. When he was in high school, Kadir thought he was a pretty good student, until he met Ms. Visconti. She was his English teacher, and as Kadir tells the story, I'd become accustomed to receiving a B for most, my most minimal efforts, but now I had been placed in a class where that would not do. I'd always thought of myself as a smart kid with a tendency to need a push every now and then to do my best work. Ms. Visconti would be the one to provide that push. My first effort at writing in her class was met with, shall I say, less than desirable results. The assigned essay I turned in wasn't even worthy of a grade from Miss Visconti. At the top of my page, she had written in bold red ink, not an essay. Ouch! I was quite embarrassed. This was way too much for this young man to accept. So, I approached Ms. Visconti and I asked her to teach me how to write an essay, which she very kindly did, thus preparing me for successful careers in high school, college, and beyond. So that's what Kadir Nelson has to say about his English teacher, Ms. Visconti. Kadir became both a very good artist and a very good writer. He became very interested in painting big, full-size, gallery-size paintings of baseball players just because he was interested in the stories of the baseball players. His paintings happened to be printed in a magazine, and that is where our story about Kadir begins. While he was still in college, Kadir started painting pictures of baseball players from the Negro Leagues. He had seen a television program about them and found it an interesting story. Some of his pictures made it into Sports Illustrated, a pretty famous magazine. And four years later, he was asked to come to Kansas City to visit the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum along with several other artists. The museum hoped that they would be willing to create art for a traveling museum exhibit. And Kadir was one of the artists. He was a known artist, but not really famous yet. So he had painted some pictures of black baseball players just because he liked the idea of doing it. But Kadir got really hooked on the stories he learned about those players when he was visiting the museum. Stories about baseball players who were really, really good, but who a hundred years ago in the 1920s weren't allowed to play on teams with white players. So they started their own teams in cities all across America. They played in their own big league stadiums to thousands of fans. Kadir painted a picture called Willie Foster and Young Fans. Willie Foster is a baseball player who's heading to the stadium. He's wearing his suit and he's carrying his suitcase. And four young boys walk behind him carrying one, his baseball glove, the second boy, his uniform, and another boy, his shoes, and another boy, his bat. He is their hero. They're also sort of hoping that maybe he'll let them into the game as his guest. People loved the painting and they loved the story it told. So Kadir started talking to baseball players who had played in the Negro Leagues. He loved to tell their stories. They were sports superstars. They played a game that they loved and Kadir got caught up in their stories. The more stories he heard, the more stories he wanted to paint. And so he kept painting. 
He painted Turkey Stearns, who played for the Detroit Stars. He painted Cool Papa Bell, who played for the Homestead Grays in Pittsburgh. He painted Bullet Rogan, who played for the Kansas City Monarchs, and Oscar Charleston, who played for the Chicago Giants. Kinnear painted players singing on the bus while they traveled to another city for a game. He painted a game played under night under lights that still left the field in shadows. He painted umpires in their black suits ready to referee the game. And soon Kadir had a dozen paintings of baseball players and people started asking him, are you going to put those in a book? Kadir loved the idea of his paintings going into a book. So he started thinking of authors that he knew who could write the stories he had heard from all these great baseball players. And then he found out from his agent it could be years before his book would be, ever be written if he waited for someone else to tell the story. So Kadir the artist became Kadir the author. He took all the things he had learned from Ms. Visconti back in high school and he used them to write the chapters of a book about baseball called We Are the Ship. And it turns out Kadir is not only a really great artist, he's also a really good writer. His book won major awards, and so he kept writing and kept painting. His friend Kwame Alexander says that Kadir doesn't speak a lot with words, but he speaks a lot with his paintbrushes. Kadir just can't stop talking on canvas. Each stroke is like a thousand words. Kadir still lives in Los Angeles, and he still speaks thousands of words with each new painting. And that is our story of Kadir Nelson. Let's end with our closing song. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. It's time to say goodbye. See you next week for story time. <laughs>